there are parents in the room, so I'll stay away from describing my life story in any great detail. Because I'm a walking advertisement for the fact that you can break every rule on the planet and still convince people to give you jobs. Uh, but um, so um, just very briefly, I started my life as actually a media person. Uh, I come out of the media. Um, I did back-to-back -back startups. Um, first one was very successful. My second startup failed miserably. And it failed because of regulatory and policy reasons. And uh, that's when I first began to understand you know, when you lose money, it's a great way of actually knowing what a problem it is, the policy environment that you operate in, um, and um, which is what really led me to go to Columbia. Um, I did my MA and PhD in PhD at Columbia. Um, I, I'm not an economist, but I was trained by one of the world's best economists, uh, Richard Nelson, who's, um, who was basically writing about evolutionary economics. Um, after which um, I went to Cornell, and after Cornell I was a professor at uh, the Indian School of Business, ISB, um, and then I quit ISB to take over my current job. Um, and so I'd say broadly speaking, starting from my PhD work onwards, I've been working on development economics, or why stuff doesn't work. Um, uh, and I did a lot of things along the way, as Niranjan said, we've we we actually I actually set up a fund in India that manages a hundred million dollars today, um, but a bunch of these things basically went nowhere because what I was interested in was the economic development question. And over 20 years, I began to understand that whatever micro impact I was having, I wasn't actually moving the needle anywhere. And that's just an honest assessment of everything that I've done. And once you sort of ask yourself that question a little bit more, you realize the fact that, and that is mostly because we've been providing technical solutions to what are profoundly political problems. And they don't work because you're addressing the wrong set of issues. And that's really where IDFC Institute comes in. Um, we are basically a political economy think tank. So when you talk about public policy at the Institute, I haven't seen the syllabus, but I certainly hope political economy is, is a large part of uh, what you do in public policy because public policy is, as you get into it you be, begin to very seriously understand it is political economy, it is political, it is not technical. Um, um, and so um, one of the things that um, has put a frame around what we do is something that Bill Gates tweeted out about a month or so ago. He said uh, people routinely overestimate what can be done in one year and routinely underestimate what can be done in 10 years. We are playing the 10-year game. You are not going to see the sort of changes in public policy in any short-term, uh, short-time periods. You have to be willing to commit to the long, longer time period. I think that's extremely important. The other thing is to be able to distinguish between symptom and disease. And very often people confuse the symptom and treat it because it's actually much easier. Because getting down to the disease is actually very complex. So I used to be at the World Bank where you know one of the things I worked on was the digital divide. And that's a classic example of treating a symptom and not a disease. Because the problem is not the lack of computing at the hands of the poor. The problem is poverty. Giving them a computer is not going to solve the problem. There's underlying issues that you need to sort of address. So uh, of all the people, I don't know, Niranjan, you were the one who gave me this great line, the Delhi Jal Board. The motto of the Delhi Jal Board, don't fix the pipes, fix the institutions that fix the pipes. Uh, of, and of all the people in the world, the Delhi Jal Board had this as their motto. Um, so, so that's really uh, where we come from in terms of the kind of uh, work we do. Um, I guess the easy one is uh, we are developing the country's ease of doing business index. So we are doing that for the ETIO and uh, the Prime Minister's office, uh, and the politicians. So, that's one of the things we do because people don't realize how narrative stake home. So for instance, Chandra Babu Naidu lost the 2004 elections because he ignored rural areas and only paid attention to urban areas. People who make that claim, and that's a very popular narrative, haven't actually looked at the data at all because the data tells you something else altogether. Because what the data tells you is that Chandra Babu Naidu actually lost every single urban constituency. So in fact, the only people who voted for Chandra Babu Naidu were rural voters. So not only is the narrative wrong, it's the exact opposite of what happened. 
And what happens is the consequence is you have 10 years of very bad policy that follows from misunderstanding the data around the narrative. Okay? So that's, that's another example of the sort of things we do. Uh, uh, I, I don't know what else I can, I can tell you. I, I mean, in terms of uh, what we look for in people being hired, so we've had a fabulous experience uh, bringing in some interns from Meghna Desai. In fact, I'm interviewing somebody right after this meeting as well to come on full time. Um, so everything that we've sort of discussed um, is baseline. So I'm assuming all of that to be a given. So I'm assuming that you know Stata, I'm assuming you know R, and all of that stuff. But once you know all of that, how do you differentiate yourself when you look at public policy? I think curiosity above all. I think you made the same point, DK, that that's something that you just have to put a very high price on. And then coming out of this place, I think what we value the most is economic reasoning. I mean, it's not it's not a mathematical thing that we're looking for, but you have the ability to think in an economic fashion. You know, scarce resources, optimization of scarce resources. That's the sort of mentality that we're looking for. Um, uh, beyond that, um, I can't remember if it was DK, if it was you or Rupam, one of you mentioned communication skills. Hugely important. I mean, in public policy, if you can't tell a story, you're cooked. You can't, you're basically ineffective. So you have to be able to tell the story. Um, and then in terms of uh, employment uh, possibilities, um, look, so A, the think tank world in India itself is becoming very rich. So um, Carnegie has just come into India, Brookings has opened up in India, uh, there's a whole number of other independent think tanks that are coming out in India. Um, the other great news is the government itself is starting to hire people in OSD roles, in sort of junior roles. And some of these roles are actually market competitive salaries. So today, an OSD in the Prime Minister's office or Niti Ayo makes more money than a secretary in the government of India. Okay, so there is real market competitive salaries coming. So therefore, my pitch would be, if you're looking at economics through the lens of you want to influence the lives of people, then public policy is a very, very nice place to start. Thank you.